What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. Peace, y'all. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica. We are down here, honey. We are um, talking about married to medicine, right? Hold on. Shut up, Big Sean. Okay, we get it. Oh, yeah, married to medicine. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Hopefully, it stays cloudy today because yesterday it was like hot on my face. So go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment, and let me know you stopped by. And we are down here, honey. Married to Medicine was pretty good. I know I just had this thing slapped on my head. It was cold outside this morning. And I couldn't find my little beanie. So I was like, let me just uh, slap let me just slap this thing on my head. It was slapped on yesterday, too. Sometimes you just want to throw something on your head for no reason, right? But this morning, I had a reason. It was cold. Come on, Britney Spears. Married to Medicine was pretty good. I kind of missed the very, very, very beginning. I know that they were all downstairs in um, in the in the room in the um, basement. I don't know where they were, a child in the house. And um, there was a woman there who was like a coach or, of some sort. I don't know if she was a relationship coach or a sex education coach or something like that. And she was talking about monogamy and ethical non-monogamy ethical non-monogamy so that's what we need a word for and that means that you both know we're doing this the right way it's not from a deceptive place which you know for some men the way that the world is set up it's because it's so it's so common and so acceptable that the men walk into something it's so funny because it's like you, they deceive Maybe, maybe they figure, like, maybe she'll be the one that actually, like, says absolutely not if I cheat on her, right? Because it's, like, women do accept men back um, more um, when, even after the man has cheated, because it's acceptable, right? Because that's just what men do. Um, so they, they don't really, they can't really get with the ethical non-monogamous relationships because that takes the, the fun out of being deceptive and sneaking around and feeling like you're getting over on someone. Um, they don't want women to be like that in relationships, even though they are, they just, and that's why they say you, you, you think that men cheat more, but it's not that they cheat more. It's because it's more acceptable. And so it's there. It's like, it's normal. It's something that it's, it's acceptable. So it's normal for a man to cheat on his wife and for the wife to be accepting of it, um, we see it all the time. Men have babies, you know, out babies. And, girl, <laughs> the women stay. Talking about they're going to take care of the baby and all this other stuff. Girl, that was Letitia crazy ass. The lady said she had three boyfriends and one husband. Back in the day, I used to want brother husbands, but then I realized the way that men were socialized that you wouldn't be, it It would be extremely hard to find a heart-centered, three heart-centered men, like three of them, it to be in one place at one time, that's pretty hard. Like to get a man to be accepting that you are going to operate in the relationship just like him, you know? Oh, I want the heater to be on. I'm sorry, I got to turn it back on. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I used to be like, oh, I'm going brother husbands. And I was like, mm, these niggas will give you a fucking headache. Like, but if you want brother husbands, you can, the type of dude, they ha it has to be a completely different, they, they gotta be, they, a completely different person. They have to have rejected most of their, if not all of their programming and socialization, they would have to. Because just men are not socialized to be accepting of a woman being non-monogamous as women are more accepting of men being non-monogamous. You know how many women or people are in relationships with single men while you sitting over there being the bigger person? <laughs> ah! um, Cecil and 
Simone were on that pillow. That was so cute. That was so cute. You see, Damon was trying not to look. Damon is odd to me because it's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like, you see this like kind person and he seems very gentle, but he has these weird ass, like, I don't know. It's just so weird. And I like, and knowing that he was a cute and it's like, something must have happened for you to be all so like, yes, and I don't want to look in that direction of, you know, he was trying not to look at Cecil and Simone, like looking off to the side, like he couldn't, like, I know that you're sexually liberated. I know that you are cute dog. I know, baby, I know you are, or you're not sexually liberated. And you're one of those heterosexual men who are sexually repressed because you knocked down so many women masturbating with their bodies that you didn't really get to experience really good like sex like sex like like what it was made for <laughs> hey is you big enough hey <laughs> take it take it Oh, I, I don't know. Damon is a peculiar little character. <laughs> I was looking at him like, why is he acting like he can't look in that direction? Anyway, they look like they were having fun. Um, Curtis and Jackie, you know, Jackie had to keep it cute. She had to be Sister Jackie Francis over there from the convent, honey. And act like it's so funny because it's like you want to do these sex positive things, which I think are great. I think the conversations are great. I think the open dialogue about it is is great. I think it is all great. But you're the one, you're the host. You're like Angela Yee. Angela Yee gets people around her talking about sex and talking about all they think. And she barely even talks, barely even. She just, she just be sitting there. You think she a, a super freak. She just be sitting there letting people talk, talk and talk. And you're the one, the damn, you're the damn host of the show, right? So Jackie's sitting on the side of the little thing, like, and hitting um, Curtis's butt with the thing. You know, she's trying, you know, she's trying. Girl, Curtis said that, ooh, I, that pillow, that might be some girl. Shut up. Can we put the pillow over your face? <laughs> the men are outside. They're talking about, you know, um, you know what the, you know, doing kind of like a recap of the lady the who came, right? And they were talking about, um, Eugene was like, nah, like he, Eugene wants a traditional, traditional, I feel like Eugene wants a traditional monogamous relationship without the gender roles. Right. And that's fair. Like, I, I feel like that's what he was trying to say. Uh, uh, you know, like that, like, I feel like it's, it's okay. Like it's, but the polyamory, I don't know if I could do that. That's what that that's that's what they were saying. Polyamory means that you're a you are you don't okay. It's not that you're in the relationships with people, but you are you understand that you cannot just love one person at a time. Like you can you can fall in love and entertain and have loving relationships with more than one person right? So that's what that was. He was like, it could be cool, you know, but you know, everybody has to be heart centered. There cannot be anyone like, you know, these niggas be trying to do polyamory, but they're deceptive. It's, it's like they can't, they, they're socialized, they're programmed, they're programmed to be deceptive that they can't even have effective polyamorous relationships where the, where the, the damn blueprint is you can, you can love more than one person and be in relationship with a person who loves more than one person too. But y'all niggas want to sneak around and be like, I'm polyamorous, but then nobody knows that any other person exists and you doing stuff on the side and then whatever rules you have created, you going outside of the, like you still like cheating in your polyamorous relationships. It's like they don't know how to not approach the relationship with deception. It's like they got to be deceptive in some way. I don't know what that is or where that comes from. 
But it's like, I'm going to feel like I'm getting, I'm getting the better end of the deal than these bitches or something. I don't know what they be thinking, child. I think that's what they be thinking. But it's like, I, they don't want to, it's it's weird because I, I look at people online all the time and they like, I see women in polyamorous relationships with these niggas. First of all, the nigga has no fucking capital, no resources, no nothing. You just with the nigga and he with a bunch of other women. Like nobody is getting shit. <laughs> and that's where it looks like the nigga's having his cake and eating yours too. So it looks, it's lopsided. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, they, it's, it's, it's so weird. And I, and I, I read like stories about women in polyamorous relationships with men and the men are still deceptive. They're still deceptive. And it's like, it, it's not even, it's designed for you to, you don't have to be deceptive, deceptive. So what is it in here that you have to be deceptive in a game where it is not required? You don't even, ha- you don't need, you don't even need it. Like, what's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? The women are in the inside. Um, Heavenly says, would your, would your husband, would y'all, would your husband be offended if you think your husband would be offended if you asked, you know, you wanted to, it's like you're saying you're not enough. And that's not what it is. It's not because nobody can be everything to anybody. And that's just the truth. And that's why the design, the way that they design marriage it 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 is a failed it's a flawed a flawed model because it's not realistic to tell somebody that you can't fall in love with anyone else whatever your idea of love is fall in love falling in hip it's falling skipping and jumping and hopping and skipping and falling in love and shit falling in love ain't shit where's that from <laughs> Uh, yeah, he said something stupid the other day. Anyway, anyways, I'll give you a clue. But the thing is, would your husband be offended if you brought someone into, if you wanted to have somebody in the relationship? If they think that it's not that, like I said, it's it's really, it's a, it's something that you have to like unlearn because you have been taught a certain way from the very beginning. Like from you were a little kid, this is what you've been taught, how relationships are supposed to look. And that's where people struggle because they're trying to create or design their relationship to look like what is acceptable to people looking on instead of designing a relationship that's going to work for the people who are in it. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) You know, and that's what that I really believe that is the obsession with Will and Jada, because the way that it's designed and the way that it looks, that's supposed to be some shit that is a secret. You're supposed to be sneaking around doing the things that they're okay with doing you know what i'm saying you i'm watching this dude you see him look walking walking around why don't you walk on the sidewalk oh he's looking for cigarettes um you what was i saying i forgot what i was saying anyways let me get back to what i'm talking about that's that's a that's a a damn clue to, um, Toya said, can I say something without being judged? What if the relationship is great and they design the relationship the way they want to design it? Like Will and Jada. That's what I'm getting. That's what I was talking about. Will and Jada are doing what y'all be doing in the in secret. Right? So on the outside, you're supposed to be like, uh, their relationship is uh and uh and uh, but y'all doing the same thing. Y'all just sneaking around and doing it instead of actually designing the relationship where everyone can benefit and be fulfilled in the relationship. And then also like, okay, well, we're going to be in relationship with other people. No, because society tells you that. No, you're not supposed, you're supposed to be in relationship with one person. And that's, I feel like that's why so many people like kind of fail in their marriages is because they are trying to make the marriage look, look a certain way to people looking on instead of designing their relationship and worrying about the people who are in the relationship. So from the outside looking in, that's why like just to just go a little bit off topic, that's why. It's weird to see how slow slaw 
is positioning herself because in society, your position is an unacceptable position. You are a side chick. You're not supposed to have any support. You're not supposed to have any help. You are supposed to be shunned. You are supposed to not never to be heard from again. And you keep playing in these people's faces. You don't understand your social position as a mistress, side chick, whatever you want to call it, to this married man. And it doesn't make sense because you want to be in the forefront when you your position socially, you should be not saying anything. You're not supposed to be jumping in front of cameras and stuff like that. You don't know your position. You're out of order, social order. You're a side chick. Shut your ass up. But if Melody and then if the people are designing their relationship to say, I don't know about making babies on the outside, but designing the ba- the relationship to say, Hey, I can go out. And the woman has the same type of access. That's why everybody's freaking out about Jada and August Alcina, where it felt like, oh my gosh, she's cheating on Will. And they're like, well, he's then Will comes out and says, she's never cheated on me. And everybody's like, but, 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 but. They're doing what y'all do in private. They're just doing it like this is how this is how our shit is designed. We know we're going to be life partners. We think we do partnership well. I'm going to spend, we're we going to be witnesses to each other's life journey, but we understand that we are going to have relationships outside of this relationship. And people cannot seem to hand it, handle it when y'all are sneaking around, causing yourself needless suffering because your You want to design your marriage so that it's socially acceptable instead of doing what will actually make you happy in the relationship. Does that make sense? Quad in the quad has it out for Toya. And next week we see that or at the reunion, we see that Eugene yells at quad and says to leave them alone because it is clear that there's a problem. And y'all said that quad is holding on to something a Taurus. quad is holding on to something um like she held on to that money so that she can get her a house same thing she held they them Tauruses they hold <laughs> they hold on to grudges like they hold on to their money okay <laughs> that's what i thought when simone was like Ah, they, and then it's like, it's so insulting to think that you guys are making a suggestion that this woman has to sell her pussy in order for her to get her house built and renovated instead of being a woman who actually saved her money so she can get the house that she wants to get. Like to make the suggestion that some man, some kind of way had you, you got to be fucking if you don't have a man. Because it's so odd because how can the wife of a doctor be throwing, oh, your your little apartment and stuff like that. And y'all can't even keep a house. I'm sorry, but uh, quad cleared on that. Do you hear me? And she said, you can, you got a man. So that's insulting. That is so insulting. When Simone said, well, we wonder how she's getting all this stuff. What do you mean? The girl, the woman can't save her money. She can't have made smart investments like it has to be that she's selling pussy like girl y'all got to be more progressive than that come on so she couldn't do this without some kind of man intervening in some way and if she did use her feminine wiles to get what she want what's the problem she's single okay shit she could do what the fuck she want to do like i'm like y'all are a mess well, Toya wants to screw somebody else <laughs> and G- and Eugene be okay with it um she's probably open already and he just doesn't know i said oh my god she really on her she's really on her well and then you know uh, what's her name said sonia uh, sonia simone she said you know realistically you're gonna have lulls in your relationships you're gonna have peaks and valleys the relationship isn't always up so there are gonna be some unhappy times and if you have god i was like what wait a minute what if you have God in the relationship, then you can get through anything. 
I guess. I mean, I guess I get. I don't know. Maybe God. Maybe you pray to God so you you don't. You can say, God, I don't want to have feelings for a, any other person. Please only contain my emotional and, and affection for one person. Please, like, is that what is that is that what you're trying to say? I don't understand. Um, they were talking about how the women were making up Toya and Anila, Toya and Audra, but we still need Heavenly and Contessa. We are at a new place. It is what it is. It's wonderful and beautiful. And then Heavenly goes, well, I hope you know how beautiful you are. You don't have to take things because somebody's a man. And I was like, why would she say that? So she's like, I choose who to marry. Um, Don't talk about my relationship. Keep it to yourself. Don't run your motherfucking mouth about my motherfucking family. Um stop talking about it this is why we don't f with each other because this is not a safe space and i'm not doing this again she said scott has evolved um what's her name said you don't need to put your marriage out there and you know later jackie said she wanted to like jump in and remind contessa about how she put her marriage like for everybody to see and it wasn't heavenly it wasn't just heavenly but in to simone's point if we if we're home girls, there's a certain um protection that you can cover your home girl with even in talking about her relationship, right? Um when she was asked the question, it doesn't mean that she has to answer it. You know what I'm saying? Like if oh is is Scott uh, uh emotionally and verbally abusing Contessa, I if 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 you want to tell the truth, tell what you've seen, right? If you want to say, well, from what I've seen, Scott can probably work on the way he speaks to Contessa. It's a way that you can say things without making it seem like you don't have your homegirls back. I understand what that's like um, when you are confiding in someone. And then they go out and tell other people. It's the same. It's kind of the same thing, I feel like. And Heavenly is just telling us, right? Um, But it's like you almost have an inside to the relationship. So what you say, people are going to put a lot of value in in that because you're close to Contessa. You know what I'm saying? Um, Comes down to you're my friend and you're dragging me. Right. That's what it comes down to. You're my friend and you're on your YouTube channel talking about me in a way that just leaves me open. Like, that's not, that's not cool. Like you, you should, like, I feel, I feel like you should cover your friends in a way you don't have to, there's a way that you can talk about it, tell the truth and not be hurtful and try not to be hurtful, um, in that way. Um, I, Heavenly says, I've been nothing but a friend to her. Um, but Heavenly, but Heavenly, but Heavenly, she said, Toya, please stop talking to me. Please stop talking to me. She said, please, bitch. She says, I see right through you and your ugly ass r- wig. She said, um, somebody said, you did some su- stupid shit today. Oh, that's what um, Heavenly said to Toya. I think when she was talking about Eugene. You did some stupid shit today. She said, everything I said, I meant that shit. She says, um, but why is she screaming? Um, Jackie told her, you don't have to respond to her. Um, I don't think that we can get past it. She's angry at her life. Um, and the hurt goes so deep. So there's like some things that she knows. And this is what it's, this is what it seems like to me. As with so many, we've seen it so many times. What ha- what is going on between Contessa and Heavenly? I'm sure there are women who could get in the comments that said they had a home girl who came to them talking cash money shit about her relationship. She's leaving. She's doing all this stuff. She's tired of this nigga shit. He talked to me any kind of way. I'm tired. I'm tired. Da, 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 da. Your home girl says, girl, if you not going, you either going to shit or get off the pot. Stop talking about this man if you're not going to leave his ass, right? You communed with her, you shared with her, but what happened is they made up. And now 
she's mad at you because now you know all the stuff you can say what you know everything that she said about him she needs to separate herself from you and I, I, you know I, I'm, I'm i'm telling you it happens all the time it happens all the time what is what contessa and heavenly are demonstrating for us happens all the time with women who are friends the one one is going to lead the husband and then she turns around makes up with the husband now the husband got an attitude with heavenly and so you got to create conflict to create space that's what it sounds like to me um toya says to quad um yeah you know just like with the little rumor at your party she said it didn't originate with me but i repeated it yes i did she says, um, Kwa says in the in the confessional, Anila doesn't want anyone to say it was Anila. So that's good. It's good that um, that Quad knows that Anila is just trying to get it off of her. Um, they were all in on it as far as I'm concerned. Um, you invited Zaina. You invited Zaina. She says, well, is it is it that you wanted to start a rumor about me or repeat a rumor about me so you can deflect off of you sleeping with your contractor? And she was like, oh, oh, okay. I see what we're doing here. Okay, that's what we're doing. Okay, that's so cute. <laughs> that's so cute. I <laughs> oh, wasn't that cute. <laughs> Quad, Quad, Quad was she was she was caught off guard with that when she was not ready. She was like, "Oh, so cute." <laughs> so okay, so you're saying that I screwed my carpenter? Okay, what you're saying? She was like, "No, I never talked about you." Simone was like, "I, I'm the one who said it." She was like, "Well, I got it from a reliable source." How can you renovate your home for two million dollars as a single woman? Um, save money. She's a tourist. Save money save my money, do, have, do jobs y'all don't know shit about. Like y'all, why are you, that's, that's the one thing that's, you can't, people will count your money, honey. They will count your money and let a, a man not be there. That's, that's the thing that it, it boggles me when I hear the women like make those suggestions. To me, it is an insult to suggest that she could not do this on her own, that she had to sell some pussy or a man had to be on the side giving her money or something like that. It's so weird. It is so weird. We're like, this is, we plug cars in and put, they are being charged with electricity and y'all still think a woman can't buy a, and then like, it's not like she's buying a house on her own in Beverly Hills or Calabasas. She's in fucking Georgia, $2 million. Quad's home anywhere else will be well over $2 million. $2 million ain't nothing. Okay. It, for It's nothing for all that house that that lady has. There really is nothing. And it's like, y'all act like, I don't know. It really isn't nothing. $2 million for a house is nothing. <laughs> that big ass house and all that damn landscaping. Okay. Whatever. Um, I'm sick of my name being dragged through the mud. She's like, sick of your name being dragged through the mud. You a liar since the day I met you. <laughs> Quad said, you a motherfucking manipulator. And then Quad gets up. The security was running down. I don't know if that was security. It looked like security was running around the corner. Simone hollered, security? It was so funny. You've been trying to mess with everybody's marriage. You're a jealous bitch. And then that's when Heavenly and then was walking down. They were like, what's going on, right? Heavenly and then was walking down. And then Quad went right to Heavenly. This bitch said, I'm jealous of her. Because <laughs> I know. <laughs> Ah, because they know they be wearing Toya out. <laughs> bitch, bitch, I'm jealous of her. Contessa said, this is the worst family reunion ever. Jealous of what? I'm Frank Sinatra of this shit. I did it my way. These mediocre bitches. I said, come on, Quad. Quad is going to give you an scene, okay? She's going to give you all the voice. Here come Quad with all her voices. <laughs> Bitch, why would they do a call like that? Talking about 15 minutes later, 27 minutes later. Why they show the damn sun coming up in a damn deer outside? <laughs> Quad still running her mouth. You can't keep your house and you got a man. Let it what? 
Let her get it out. 17 minutes. Yeah, that's what um, um, Jackie was saying. Just let her get it out. Let the damn car run out of gas, honey. Just go, honey. And then it said an hour later, she was still talking. Oh, my God. That was so funny. I said, why would they do quad like that? That was hilarious. The next day, Damon and Heavenly, you know, Pastor Damon, he over there, Deacon Damon. Yeah, that's what he gave me, old Deacon. That's like, you can't tell me you wore heaven. You didn't wear Heavenly's ass out. That's what I'm saying. Something must have happened because he's so, he going to be so pious. And uh-uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not like I, I'm really looking at Damon. He want to do all this traditional shit and it's okay and stuff, but you kind and gentle, but uh-uh. You ain't fooling nobody, Dr. Damon. I'm on to you. I'm on to you, Dr. Damon. Heavenly, um, y'all need to be uplifting. Oh, she said, how was the stuff with the men last night? He was like, yeah, we were uplifting each other, you know. She was like, I wish we can say the same. He was like, we just heard a roar from out from outside. You guys are violent with each other. And it's just not, it is, it's, it's not good. It is not good. Um, it is okay to not hold a grudge. The words women say can be so painful. We have to. It's. I mean, not it, Not everyone has the skill, but most women need the skill to rip you to shreds with her words because we can't fight men. Some of them, we can. Some of them, we can whoop your ass like Jessica Dyer told, told you, well, I'll beat your ass. You don't have to worry about him. But, you know, that in, in most cases, you're not going to be able to beat no man. But the way that you that's why it's unfair that you can react in a violent, aggressive, physical way off of some words. You need to learn some words, too. I'm sorry, because if I can't physically beat you up, you better learn the words. And just because I have the words to rip you to shreds and ch chop your motherfucking head off. Don't want you. Don't, you can't fight me now. But that's the reason why women have a way with words when it's time to get a man together to to dig a ditch and bury his ass and cover the ditch and have a funeral or repass and everything. We know how to do that just with a few words. And that's what it, oh, women. Yeah, because we can't fight every man. Y'all so damn dumb. I had a man tell me, oh, I can see why somebody would hit you. Yeah. What do you mean? You need to have the same word. If I can rip you to shreds, you better be able to rip me to shreds with your words. Don't want to get physical. That's not fair. That's not fair. So y'all need to pull up because if I can't beat you and fight you like you want to fight me, you better get your words together. Get that vocabulary up. Okay. Lengthen your fucking lexicon. Okay. God damn it. Y'all niggas get on my nerve. He's talking about women with your words. Yeah, you got damn right. You got damn right. We could say four words and destroy your life. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Ain't nobody backing away from that. Nobody should be ashamed of that. Say something to me. I will have you in the corner, rocking back and forth, slobbering. Don't with me. Okay. <laughs> yes. The words can be painful. That's the purpose. Okay. Shit, just don't say nothing. No. And that's the problem. It's like you're not going to be able to say nothing because Heavenly was like, I just want to let you know you're beautiful and you don't need to take nothing from no man, basically. <laughs> Bitch, shut up. You can't do nothing right. She wanna she wants conflict, but she knows that Contessa, Contessa knows that Heavenly didn't do nothing to her. Bitch, why did Contessa wait? Let me get oh here's Contessa. They're getting ready for church, right? Oh, Simone and Jackie, they're sitting there having a conversation in the bed. Why did everything go so left? I spoke with Heavenly. I told Heavenly, just listen and nod. Um, but she, you know, I tried, right? And she says, but I wanted to jump in because Contessa did share a lot of info. They showed a flashback, honey. They have a montage. That's the thing that I don't understand. It's like, are you really walking through life that so unaware that you have forgotten what you did last season or the season before about your husband and having him showing pictures to the people, you telling him like they had a whole montage. Did you have a flashback? And then, and then Contessa, when you saw the episode this past week, were you like, yeah, I was, I, I was doing a lot. But no, you have to blame Heavenly. And that's why Heavenly is so 
offended because it's like, don't use me as a scapegoat, bitch. You know, you don't the, what you told me, you're not happy. And you playing this role. I don't know what you playing this role for girl, but you're a beautiful woman and you don't need to do nothing da, 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 for no man. That was some, what do you call it? Um, inside insider. She was speaking to her in code. You know what the fuck exactly what she was talking about. Contessa. That's why Contessa got up and left. Cause bitch, I, you know that I know, I know what's real, but that you don't want to be my friend anymore. That's fine, girl. That's okay, girl, because you with your man, honey. You're going to stick beside him after all the shit you done told me about that motherfucker. Okay, girl. That's basically what's happening. Contessa, Contessa um, made it okay. When did, when did Contessa decide that it wasn't okay what she was doing and to, about her marriage and talking about her marriage? Um, to Simone's point, don't put me on blast. That's not, how you, that's, that's not how you operate in the friendship. Just don't do that. Don't do that. Contessa and, and Scott are in there getting ready for church. And she said, this is why I don't desire a day to day with heavenly. Um, she's plant. She's been planting seeds and, and passing rumors for a year. Contessa, what? Contessa. Why? Scott looks like Alfonso Ribeiro to me. You know, silver spoons. Oh, Carlton. Yes. I'm telling my age, silver spoons. Um, yes, Carlton Banks. That's who go back and look at Scott. I was like, Scott looks like um Scott looks like um Alfonso Ribeiro. He does. Um you know, Contessa hit a, hit us with, we're stronger than ever. You know, that's Miss Miss Stewie Darby. She we're better than ever, all the way to divorce. We're better than ever. We're better than ever. We're better than ever. <laughs> I said, uh oh, Contessa, we're better than ever. I said, uh oh, we're stronger than ever. That's what she said. Um, we're doing good, and Scott was like, we're working on it, okay. Um, and then she was like, I'm sorry, I put her in our life, girl. <laughs> I was like, Contessa, oh my god. Well, you did it. You did. You put her in your life. You told her too much stuff. And you wasn't going to leave that man. And you made it seem like you were. File, house, houses being listed. Filing and all this other stuff. So, and you decide to stick beside him. So now you got to create space between you and the person you done told everything to, girl. Because y'all was close. They showed a montage of their relationship and stuff. And um, Heavenly said, you know, I really... I loved her. I love her. It is really hard, but she was like, but that's another thing on heavenly side. What you can learn is yes, you loved her, but the way you showed love, you didn't cover her. You did not cover her. You shouldn't have been talking about her in that way. Even though she did tell you all that, all that stuff, her in that vulnerable space of what, should I leave my man or not? Or what am I going to do? You don't, you have to keep her covered. That's how I feel. You do. You have to keep her covered. If your friend is invulnerable and you're like, and not only that, you're talking about it and monetizing off of it, talking about the show. But then at the same time, there's like both of them t could take learning lessons from how they were in that relationship. Contessa got to know you can't tell everybody your business if you're really not going to follow through on it and then try to you like act like they did something to you. I'm sorry. I let her in our lives. Girl, I was like, girl, get out of here. You and Qua went to the same acting school. Get the fuck out of here. Eugene left. Um, they had a relationship resuscitation church services. Um, Anila and Quad, uh, she had a conversation with Quad about, um, no, Quad had a conversation with Anila about, you know, what she's hearing some things being said about her. Um, T Toya doesn't know how to talk to her friends. We saw glimpses of the way that Toya was talking to Anila. Um, I feel like Toya was like, kind of like, I'm gonna punk this girl. She gonna do what I say. She gonna be my little flunky because I'm tired of everybody talking about, I don't have this. I'm like trying to pull rank, trying to like pull this hierarchy on, on Anila and talk to her crazy and stuff like that. And Anila, she didn't, she's not dealing with it. You talking to her crazy and, and then it's like, it's weird how she kept saying, I don't know you. I don't know what you would do and all this other stuff. And you, then in the, in, in the next breath, you're like, I was looking at the, down the house and looking for you and you were gone for two weeks. And I was like, girl, y'all get on my nerves. Um, 
Karen was asking about black church etiquette. I was like, okay, you want to know what is acceptable, what's not acceptable, girl. Heavenly and Contessa, they're going to move forward. We're not going to tolerate being mistreated. Anila said that the church service, that man put the nail in the coffin. (laughs) Oh, girl. She was like, what? That's not it. (laughs) He put the nail in the coffin. She said he hit the nail on the head. I don't know. Nail in the coffin was like, you sealed the deal. Like, that's what what did it. (laughs) A nail in the coffin. Um... Toya said, Heavenly and Quad are not good friends to her. Um, They don't say, when you're friends with people, you don't say things that you can't come back from. That's true. That's true. That's when you know, like, when you start disrespecting a person, you start saying crazy stuff to them, calling them out their names and stuff like that. It's a wrap. The respect is gone. You know what I'm saying? Um... Audra let everybody know that she was pregnant. I don't know how you've been married for 25 days and you know you're pregnant already. <laughs> the math isn't mathing, okay? So y'all wasn't y'all wasn't celibate up after your what you was celibate before. So you was fucking, you were like, let's figure out how we can have sex. And by the time we get married, you was probably pregnant walking down the aisle. Most a lot of women are child. <laughs> a lot of women are child. A lot of women, those who actually do, some some of them don't even know. They get pregnant or they get pregnant on their honeymoons or something like that. Mm-hmm. So you've been married twenty five days and you know you're pregnant already. Heavenly says she's going to not apologize because she's gonna probably going to make a mistake again, but she's going to be mindful of how she talks about her friends on social media. That's her lesson. It is. It is your lesson. It is your lesson. And then also another lesson is when a friend is coming to you, this is the one thing I learned is that when a friend is coming to you about a dude, you should say, do what's best for you. You should not give any advice. Don't talk down about the man i mean and let's see i mean even at, like even in dv situations you've got to be mindful of what you say because some those women go back too you know what i'm saying it's not like you know i'm just like you learn after a while to be like girl do what's best for you do what makes you happy you know do where you know do what benefits you right that's how i say if it's if it's benefiting you when it's no longer benefiting you and it's causing you stress and all this stuff, what for? You don't have to hold on to nothing that's causing you stress. Y'all be, it's so crazy because y'all be holding on. I just had an image of like holding on for your dear life rope, rope burns on your head and you're this far off of the ground. Like in reality, when you could just let go of the fucking rope and walk away. <laughs> that's what the vision, that is a vision that I just got like, you hanging off a dear life and you just two feet off the ground. If you don't fucking let go of that toxic ass relationship and walk away, you know what I'm saying? That's what I got. Anyways, y'all take care of each other. Protect your energy. Let's get down in the comments. Let me know what you think of the episode. Peace. Oh, that was a season finale, huh? Okay. So next week is the reu you. All right. Shout out to Alex Rogers. All right, y'all take care of each other. Protect your energy. Peace.